Hey guys, I was sitting here, I was starting to think to myself about the disadvantages of blockchain technology. And I know like I'm a Bitcoin maximalist, right? I mean, I love my Bitcoin and it's a blockchain based currency, right? But when it comes down to currencies, there are some major, major disadvantages to blockchain technology. And just think about this for a second, all right? Um, the, the disadvantages in small transactions, okay? And the size of the blockchain. In order to run a wallet, whether it's on your computer, on your phone, whatever, in order to run a full wallet on your device, which is what blockchain is meant for, it's meant to be decentralized, meaning that everybody downloads a copy of the entire transaction history. That way there's no single person out there can ever change the transaction history without you knowing that somebody tampered with the history, right? That's the purpose of decentralized blockchain. So in order to have decentralized blockchain, we run wallets. So on my computer, I have several different wallets, right? Uh, and these wallets, I, I run them and they actually download the entire transaction history of that particular currency, that particular token or that particular uh, blockchain, right? So what happens in the case of small transactions? And we're seeing this in Bitcoin right now where Bitcoin's blockchain is like 300 and some gigabytes right now. So just imagine for a second, imagine, okay, you go to Starbucks, right? And, and cause a lot of Americans go to Starbucks all the time, even here in Canada and all around the world, Starbucks is everywhere, right? Let's just deal with the United States, you know, but so you go to Starbucks, right? And so you're standing in line, you got your phone, you're standing in line cause you got to pay cause Starbucks now all, now they're using blockchain technology, right? H hypothetically speaking, of course, but imagine that Starbucks used blockchain technology for all of their retail transactions, right? So you're standing in line, you get up to the till and, um, and you go to order a coffee and then the cashier says, okay, just scan our QR code in your Starbucks wallet and we'll process your transaction. Oh, I don't have a Starbucks wallet. So now you got to go into your app store, right? And you got to go download the Starbucks wallet. So you find the Starbucks wallet, you click on it. It's, oh, 760 gigabytes. Oh my God. My, my phone only has 32 gigabytes of memory. I can't, I can't run this wallet, right? So you can't even run the wallet on your phone. And then you ask the cashier, well, what, what's, what's this all about? Well, in order to run the Starbucks wallet, you have to download the entire blockchain. Well, what's the blockchain? Well, the blockchain is the entire transaction history that Starbucks has ever made since Starbucks uh, existed in whenever they started, right? So all of their transactions are now logged on a blockchain. Think about how many transactions Starbucks has in a day. I mean, one store probably has a thousand transactions a day. I don't know how many stores they have in the United States, like a thousand stores or something, probably more to be honest, but let's just go with a thousand times a thousand is a million, right? So got a million transactions per day, and that's probably a low number, but a million transactions per day that need to be logged on a blockchain, okay? So you got entries, a million entries per day. And then now in order to actually be able to make a transaction with Starbucks, you need to download their wallet. You need to download every past transaction that Starbucks has ever made, right? Before you can even make a payment for your coffee or your latte or whatever it is that you get from Starbucks. I don't actually go to Starbucks. I hate the place, but, um, you can't do that until you download the entire copy of the blockchain. So small transactions like that uh, are, are a burden on the system, right? They're a burden because they plug up the blockchain. They create it so large, create such a large blockchain that regular everyday average people can't even participate in the decentralization anymore because it requires a, a, a set of hard drives, a multitude of hard drives in order to be able to even download and store the blockchain, right? So where does blockchain really excel? Blockchain excels in, you know, documentation of important, um, import, important events. Okay. So in the case of finances, in the case of currencies, let's say you wanted to buy a house and you wanted to log who owns that house. Well, you want to log the financial transaction of that first, right? So that's a financial transaction, a currency transaction that would benefit by being logged by a blockchain, right? Whereas, um, also you, the title of the, of the, the, uh, of the house would be, would benefit by being logged on a blockchain because it can't be changed. And you're not making a thousand, 2000, 3000, 5,000, a million 
you know, title transactions per day on a property, you know, a property doesn't get changed over a million times per day. It gets changed over once now. And in 10 years, you might sell your house and then you add another record to the blockchain, right? That's where blockchain excels because blockchain is about having a decentralized means of storing data, right? So a decentralized means of logging the transactions or logging data, essentially logging data and the change of data over time. Okay. So, um, where else would it excel? Let's say medical records. You don't want medical records to be tampered with. So medical records can be uploaded to a blockchain and then you have a permanent record of, of a permanent medical record that can't be changed by any one individual. Somebody can add to it, but they can't change past history. Okay. And I said like titles on property, let's say transfers of business ownership might be a good one. So there's a lot of applications where blockchain is useful in the case of currencies, really, to be honest, even though I'm a Bitcoin maximalist, even though, I mean, I love my cryptocurrencies and I'm, I love this space to be in, there are some serious limitations. And it's very, very important to consider that when you are, um, you know, thinking of investing in the blockchain technology, right? Uh, you can invest in, a, like, I think one of the best investments, if somebody's looking for traditional style investments, if you're going to invest in the stocks uh, and, and things like that, is to invest in the companies who are implementing blockchain technology in amongst their already everyday occurring services. All right. I think that's one of the best places to be right now. Um, in the case of, of uh, speculating, because I'm not an investor in Bitcoin, I'm not an investor in Ethereum, I'm not an investor in Litecoin. Okay, because you don't you, investing into things. I'm going to do an entire video on the difference between investing and speculating. But when you're investing, when you invest in a company, you expect at the end of the year, if the company returns a profit, you get a check for the for dividends for for a portion of the company's earnings. In the case of currencies, it's no different than like if you went if you went and bought a bunch of euros, okay, or a bunch of yen or a bunch of pesos, whatever it is, currencies that you're going to trade on forex. At the end of the year, you don't get a check for dividends because that country did so good. You have to sell your asset in order to get any return on it. And it's the same thing in cryptocurrencies, right? Is that we have to sell it in order to get anything back, right? We don't get a check at the end of the year for dividends because the Bitcoin corporation did really good. There is no Bitcoin corporation, right? So it's purely speculation. So if you're actually looking for an investment into blockchain or something related to blockchain, you want to be looking for companies that are utilizing blockchain technology in amongst their already everyday occurring services, stuff they're already doing, but they're utilizing blockchain to make it better, to make it more, more sound, more solid, more reliable. And those companies are going to excel in the coming years, in my particular opinion. All right, guys. So until next time, we'll see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed.